Good morning, everybody. This is Sean Copeland. Today is Saturday, July the 13th, and welcome to another brand new life-changing edition of the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO. This is a very, uh, very special week for our family. Uh, my grandfather, Billy Paul Anderson, uh, I call him Grandpa Bill, passed away on Monday morning at 1.11 a.m. And I want to talk a little bit about the concept of an unsung hero, uh, an individual who changes the course of their family, the trajectory of their family, their work, their church, their community, and they don't even realize it. That is kind of the life uh, that my grandpa lived. I had the opportunity yesterday morning to uh, speak to a large group here in Tulsa at Church on the Move. And I talked with them a little bit about how, you know, it's so easy to look at the state of our world and become discouraged. But I wanted to challenge them and I want to challenge you to think differently and consider what you can do. The power that you can have, the power each of us has, not to be a victim, but to be a world changer. And I shared with them that on uh, the night before, uh, Thursday night, uh, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, it may have been one eleven, uh, the Lord woke me up and shared with me this. He said, the trajectory of your family, business, church, or community has much less to do with with external factors such as who will be president, governor, or mayor, and much more to do with how closely you obey me. And I was sharing with them a couple of stories about people that had had tremendous impacts in my life, and they just had no idea. Dr. Jim Halligan, uh, who, by focusing more on others than himself, helped me to find my uh, career. Uh, we were over at Oklahoma State University. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. We were sitting there at dinner with the Board of Regents. He asked me what I was going to do with my career, and I didn't know, and I was too embarrassed to say I didn't know, and to my left sat a gentleman named Bruce Benbrook, who had a, a nameplate that said uh, Bruce, Ber- Br- Bruce Benbrook, Chairman, Stock Exchange Bank, Woodward, Oklahoma. And I thought, well, that sounds good. So I said banking. They were all very surprised. I told them it was a very recent career decision. And Dr. Halligan, as we were walking out, uh, asked me uh, if I had any plans for the summer. He said if I wanted to go into banking, uh, maybe he could help me with an internship with a friend of his. And he did, and that introduction changed my entire life. He had no idea that him being thoughtful and reaching out on my behalf would completely change the trajectory of my life. You know, Isaiah Jarvis, my little leaguer, uh, who in the Little League World Series uh, in 2022 got hit in the head by a pitch, walked out to the mound, uh, hugged the pitcher, his friend who was crying, and uh, in uh, over a hundred interviews later, 200 million views of this video, this was all on national TV, Isaiah would always say that he was just listening to God's voice, and God's voice told him that that uh, young man, his friend, needed Jesus' love in that moment. And so he changed the world uh, with one thoughtful action and being obedient to God. And then, you know, the Lord uh, spoke to me several years ago about starting a devotional uh, with my team there at the bank. I was really, really scared to do it. I actually thought that it was um, uh, illegal, and I soon realized that it wasn't. God did not leave me alone, and so I started the devotional, and it has touched hundreds of thousands of people all over the country. Several of my friends helped me with it, and uh, it has been a game changer. It led to our faith and business events, our prayer team at the bank, changing our core purpose uh, to be to show God's love to our employees, clients, and communities, hiring a chaplain 
you know, and it all uh, just feels like a tremendous love. And I think that that one decision to obey God is going to impact a lot of people. I was sharing with them that I think we have all been doing uh, work wrong. There is a word in the Bible called avada, and I'll probably do a future uh, episode just on this, but avada means three different things in three different verses in the Bible. In Genesis 2.15, it means work. In uh, Exodus 8, 1, it means worship. In Joshua 24, 15, it means serve. I believe that God intended for all of those things to happen together. And so that led us to found the 94X Faith at Work movement that this is part of. Uh, and we do have a summit coming up on October the 1st that I think is going to be absolutely amazing. We just help people learn that it is okay, it is legal to bring your faith into your business, uh, and we teach them to do that. Now, you can't force it on anybody, but you can offer uh, all day long. And then I closed by telling the story of my grandpa, Bill. And, you know, my grandpa is pretty uh, remarkable. The, The reason that I am using Unsung Hero here for our Uh, title is because when I learned that uh, Grandpa was about to pass away, uh, we were up at our uh, lake house on Sky Took Lake, and I began to drive back uh, to him in the hospital, and on my way back there, uh, the song Unsung Hero uh, came on, and it says, you're strong like your father, even when you were scared. When I was in trouble, you never left me there. And you love like your mother, like there's nothing to lose. You're an unsung hero, so I'll, I'll sing this song to you. And when we were in trouble, Grandpa never left us there. I speak about my grandma and grandpa all over the world because of the spiritual impact that they have made on me and our family. They uh, are the patriarch and matriarch of our family. Uh, when they accepted Jesus, it changed the entire trajectory of our family. And I think the Bible really describes my grandpa Bill uh, very, very well. James 1 9 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear slow to speak, slow to anger. Now, Grandpa was a little bit fiery, uh, but he was always very quick to listen, to hear, and always slow to speak. You literally had to drag stuff out of him uh, to learn about him. Proverbs 13.22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And Grandpa, I am his child, child. And he has left me an inheritance that goes way beyond the value of money. Uh, He taught me how important it is to have a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And Proverbs 27 says, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. And my grandfather, I have received countless messages about what a great man he was, how well-respected he was, how trustworthy he was. He absolutely lived in integrity. You know, when I was uh, in the hospital with him in his last uh, day, I uh, held his hand and I looked at his hands and I just thought about all that those hands had done in his 98 years on this earth. They had ridden a horse and buggy to school. They had played every sport imaginable. They served in the engine room and kitchen in the Navy during World War II. They worked in manufacturing and delivered countless letters and packages to excited recipients over his career as a postal carrier. They placed a ring on my grandmother's hand 74 years ago. How they handed three daughters off in marriage. How they blew the whistle as he refereed games when he and my uncle were the only white men in the building and all people there respected each other. He had he did not have a, a racist bone in his body. How they taught his children and grandchildren how to play baseball and basketball. And man, did I love those days. How they led the First Baptist Church for many, many years as he was a deacon there. How they opened the Bible to read the Christmas story every year, even though we all just really wanted to open presents. How they took care of so many family members and friends anytime we needed it. 
how they mowed his two acres over and over. That was his favorite thing. And how they are holding the hands of Jesus Christ right now. My grandpa was truly the greatest of the greatest generation. He was fiery. He didn't back down from anybody. That is what led to him moving from the engine room to the kitchen uh, in the Navy. But he didn't get caught up in the trappings of this world. Uh, He focused on Jesus and his family. Those were the only things that matter. In fact, my my mom told me that a perfect picture of my grandfather was his wallet. He only had two things in it, a picture of my grandma and a worn card that had scriptures for the soul winner to use. That was my grandpa Bill. So in closing and in honor uh, of my grandfather, I would like to share a poem that I end all of my speeches with, and I think it explains Grandpa's life perfectly. It's called, What God Won't Ask. God won't ask the square footage of your house, but how many people you welcomed into your home. God won't ask about the clothes you had in your closet, but how many people you helped to clothe. God won't ask what your highest salary was, but if you compromised your character to obtain it. God won't ask what your job title was, but if you performed your job to the best of your ability. God won't ask how many friends you had, but to how many people you were a friend. God won't ask in what neighborhood you lived, but how you treated your neighbors. And God won't ask about the color of your skin, but he'll ask about the content of your character. When I finished my uh, speech yesterday morning, Uh, there at Church on the Move, there was a gentleman named David that came up to me afterwards, and he had big old tears in his eyes, and I'm going to cry even sharing this. And he said, he said, I am Grandpa Bill. He said, I didn't realize it. He said, you know, I was an alcoholic. I was a drug, drug addict, just like all the people before me. But he said, I found Jesus, and now every one of my children and grandchildren have found Jesus as well. So to my grandpa and to all of you out there, I want to thank you for being our unsung heroes. Please bow with me today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the life of Billy Paul Anderson. I thank you that he was our unsung hero and he did change generations without even realizing it. He had no idea when I told him in his room how much he meant to all of us generations down. Father, thank you for him. Let us all be live like Grandpa Bill and to be obedient to you, to love you, to center our lives around you and our families. Those are the things that matter at the end of the day. And Father, we just thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I want to thank all of you for joining this edition of the 94X Kingdom Driven CEO.